Welcome to Changi Moon. We're gonna be learning a lot. We're gonna be going up on the Beigaksan Trail. Um, so I'm going to info dump you here um, and then we're going to learn a bit more as we continue to climb. But this is a main part of the fortress wall that surrounds Seoul. So when King Tejo moved the capital to Hanyang, which is what Seoul was called in the past, um, he constructed Gyeongbok Palace in 1395 and a year later the fortress wall was constructed. And this goes all the way around what was originally Seoul, not the Seoul that we know today. Um, so you probably know the four main gates called Sa Daemun, literally four big gates. Um, but in between those big ones, think of Dong Daemun, Seo Daemun, Nam Daemun, right? In between those, we have the Sa Seoul Moon, which is the four smaller gates, and this is one of them called Changi Moon or Jaha Moon, and it was named for its beautiful scenery, which we will see soon. Um, there is a lot of drama, a lot of history. These, I, like I said, this was built in the 1300s, so there's a lot going on. One major thing that happened here actually was a thousand soldiers passed through this gate to overthrow one of the kings. Um, it was like the Korean version of a coup d'etat. So if you're interested in history, um, this is a really great place to visit and it has a lot of English um, along the wall. And so the mountain that we are going to be climbing today is called Begaksan and you might know it as Bugaksan. So you might be confused, let me explain. Actually originally in the Joseon period, it was called Be and so there is a movement to kind of remember that name and celebrate that name. So for today, we're going to be calling it Be Gaksan, but you might notice signs that say Bu Gaksan, clearing that up. And I'll tell you a lot more as we're climbing, but there are certain places that literally just opened starting in like 2020, 2022. So this is a really exciting area um, and it's really easy to climb. There are so many people going up right now as I'm just talking. Um, it should be absolutely beautiful. I picked a really clear kind of cold day. So if my fingers turn blue, that's why. Um, but yeah, this is our starting point. Like I said, Tangi Moon. And um, let's head up, shall we? I have climbed about 20 steps, I think, and I already have this view. Can you see Namsan? Over there is Lotte. It is so clear today. It is so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm continuing. <laughs> I'm no longer cold, <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> If you'd like to know more about this course that I'm on today, there's actually an online audio guide at the Soul Guided Walking Tour website. I recorded it myself, so if you'd like to listen, you can find it right here on the site, which will also be linked down below. There's also a lot of offline guided tours that you can register for and be taken around by an interpreter who really knows their stuff. If you are interested in guided tours in Seoul, definitely check it out. That info will be in the description box.
Okay, so we have made it to one of the rest stops and a little more info about what we just climbed because that took a lot of effort. Um, so this fortress wall was built obviously to protect the capital, which was called Hanyang at the time. But little issue, the wall by itself can't hold enemies out. It really depends on how strong the leader is. And in the Joseon dynasty, there were quite a few kings who decided to run away and flee during different wars. Not to name drop, but certain people like King Injo or King Sunjo definitely left their people to the will of other armies. So like I said, wall as itself doesn't cut it. But in the 1700s, another king, Sukjong, came to power and decided he wanted to reinforce the walls to make it as strong as possible while also having a leader that stays in times of crisis. So he made a couple different fortresses that still stand today. And those fortresses are called Bukansansong and Chungde song and they provided everything from places for the royal family to seek shelter as well as food storages and military storages like for gunpowder and stuff like that so a wall like this isn't seen pretty much anywhere else on earth um, and so that is why Seoul City and Koyang City are actually trying to register this as a UNESCO World Heritage Site for 2027 to celebrate this really unique thing that only exists in Korea um, so definitely cheer it on hopefully if you come and visit in the future it will be a UNESCO World Heritage Site so we're gonna head a little bit higher gonna reach the summit um, it's wild that you can walk next to something that is so old and we'll talk about it a little later but you can actually see when the wall was kind of built like in what eras it was kind of patched up and stuff like that by the way if you're if you're interested in any more of the stuff that i've mentioned um there will be information down below if i'm gonna go get water catch my breath the summit is actually where during joseon times they would do they would make sacrifices to the mountain gods in order to make sure that all of their like large-scale construction projects went off without a hitch, no natural disasters, etc. And considering how they managed to build quite a few pretty big things, I think it worked out well for them. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the views are just stunning, but these stairs are no joke. <laughs> See you at the top. <laughs> I was just reminded by nearly hitting my head on that tree that one thing that's really interesting about this fortress wall is that it was built to be completely in harmony with the natural landscape in this mountain range already. So that's why it is so curvy and so steep at some points is because they just made it match the natural ridge. Um, and that's one of the things that makes it really unique. So watch your head. Some of these pine trees, they know they're in charge, so. <laughs> I can see the light. <laughs> We're at the top. Ta -da! If you are brave, unlike me, but quite like that man, you can climb to the top. Not for me, not today. Glad I had someone do it for me because we're high up. Let me show you the view. <laughs> We made it to our next piece of history. So you might be wondering, what's up with this pine tree? Why does it have bullet holes in it? Well, <laughs> this is called the January 21st pine tree. And what happened was in January 21st, in 1968, um, a bunch of North Korean soldiers managed to get through the DMZ and come here in order to attack Seoul. And when they were found out, they kind of dispersed, ran around all through these mountains. Um, and there was a shootout that actually had casualties on both sides for North and South Korea. Um, and these are remnants of what happened. Um, these are like the actual real bullet holes in these trees. What ended up coming from that actually was not only a like local reserve 
squad to kind of you know be called for backup if something were to happen again but that actually started the resident number system that we have today which was actually helpful in checking if people were spies or not so um it's just a little piece of history a little bit more modern on this very old trail um and of course as always there's a ton of english information if you want to know more and links down below um so i think we're on the downward <laughs> part hopefully of this climb it was beautiful up there and it's been so lovely so shall we continue During the Joseon Dynasty, the people who built this were very proud of their work. So the stone behind me actually has the name of all of the people in charge, where the people who worked on it came from. So they really took pride in their work. Obviously this wall wasn't like randomly thrown together, but they really, really cared about it. Um, and so it's cool that you can still see that today, right there. Um, and they've kind of signed it in many different places, but this is just one of the best preserved ones. So keep your eye out. Written literally into the wall is a lot of history, which is so cool that it's still here. Um, so now let's take a look out into the distance. We can see so far today, it's wild. Um, let's go see. So from here we get a really clear view of all of Jongno, all the way down across the river. Because of the trees, I can't get you a really clear view of the blue house, but you can see the blue house, obviously Gyeongbok Palace, um, obviously Namsan is way out there. They just completely redid the Gwanghwamun Plaza. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm gonna try and zoom in and show you more, but like I know my camera's not gonna be able to capture it. This is beautiful, oh my gosh. Okay, so we made it to the part that I wanted to talk to you about, about how you can see kind of all the different timelines this wall has gone through. Um, you walk through this little hidden gate. You'll notice all of the stones are shaped differently. It was basically rebuilt and rebuilt and rebuilt during a bunch of different kings' reigns, and the Joseon dynasty lasted for such a long time that obviously construction technology changed, and so they just kept getting better and better. So you can see these big blocks, these little ones. Um, it's really interesting to just see the history right in front of you of how it was reconstructed um, and how it's still held up. So yeah, like I said, there's a ton of information here. We're gonna continue our walk. I'm at the top of the world, literally, oh my god. So we are at what is called the Bega Goksong, and basically with this wall, they used to create these circular sections that were for military stuff, but now it essentially is this insane lookout. You have a 360 degree view of Seoul and whatever the heck is way out there like I can see so much We're gonna go over to the other side and I'll show you like the city parts that you might recognize but you just get this Incredible view. I'll show you how high did we? Did I walk there? Let me see. Was I up that high? 
whoa if that was me i'm proud of myself <laughs> but um there's as there's already like a bunch of photographers here it's like a really incredible space you can see things if you come on a clear day you can just see details that are unreal um so this is Beigak Gok Song um don't miss out on it it's like a little offshoot but it's really quick to get up here let me show you Okay, so way out there, you can see as far as Jamshil, you can see Achasan, um, and Achasan as well has a fortress if you've ever been there. And one thing that's really interesting now that I'm at the top of this mountain <laughs> is um, obviously Korea went through a period called the Three Kingdoms period, and finally the king of Shila at the time, um, because of various different battles that were won, um, united all three of the kingdoms and actually made this huge monument at the top of Bugaksan Mountain um, and that is considered like the unification point of the three kingdoms right here um, so fun little fact you are standing literally at the foundation of the Korea that we know today how wild so um, I'm going to head down take in this view um, see you at our next stop <laughs> here celebrating the fortress wall but I just got to give a hand to the people who made all of these stairs there are so many stairs you can walk up this mountain so many ways it's incredible they're so well maintained I'm flabbergasted um, but anyway continuing down I'm focusing <laughs> On our way down, you're going to see a sign for the Bapungsa, Bapung Temple, um, and it was founded in the Shilla dynasty um, by a monk. Unfortunately, the only thing that is left are a few stones, um, but something really interesting about monks during the Joseon dynasty, the religion and philosophy of the land was Confucianism, so technically Buddhism was not supposed to be practiced, but in times of war, um, the Buddhist monks would still come to the fortress and protect the kingdom. Um, so even though they weren't necessarily so celebrated by the Chosun dynasty, um, they still stood up and defended the Korea that we know today. So definitely don't forget your Buddhist monks when you think of Korean history. They were instrumental in defending the fortress wall and everything, um, helping stockpile weapons, etc. Um, defending Korea. So yeah, definitely take a look. Um, and we are almost to the bottom. We're heading to the Samchong Rest Center. Now it's getting a little chilly again now that I'm not climbing a bunch of stairs. Also, if you haven't noticed, it's fall now, but I somehow managed to get bit by the last mosquito in Korea. So anyway, um, let's make it to the bottom, shall we? Injustice, death in the 
made it to the bottom we are heading to the Samcheongdong tennis court area um, and Samcheongdong if you don't know Sam means three so what are the three Chungs it is Sancheong, Sucheong and Incheong which means like clean mountain clean water and good people like good mountain good water good people so it's got a great name and that is the end of our Baegaksan hike as you could see Baegaksan holds a lot of history that goes from the three kingdoms era Joseon the Japanese colonial era and to the present day um, so I hope that you enjoyed that little history lesson I actually learned a lot while making this video um, and please support the cities of Seoul and Koyang on their quest to get the Bukhansan Song and the Tang Chun De Song fortresses um, registered as UNESCO World Heritage Sites for 2027. Seoul as a capital, the history here is just mind boggling. I'm always learning new things and I'm so thankful um, to be given this opportunity to share a little bit with you. So if you'd like to know some more information, definitely check down below. I will have that all linked for you. And even though this was kind of physically taxing, it wasn't that hard. I haven't hiked in like a month um, and I don't really hike difficult <laughs> um, so you can definitely do it just take your time I'm so excited to get to the rest area where I'm gonna eat my sandwich I'm gonna devour this sandwich um, but anyway thank you so much for joining me this was really great I'm glad that I got to catch the last little bit of the autumn foliage for you and um, I'll see you guys next time okay so links down below thanks for joining me bye